Hello, today I'm using Mitten Proxy to show the advanced features of this 4G Plus modem. The modem is a Circom LTE2202, branded by 3. Disclaimer, I discovered none of these exploits myself. The hard work was done by Shantir. You can see his page at ispreview.co.uk. He described his exploit process originally using Charles Proxy, which I hadn't heard of. I'm cautious about installing a man in the middle, Mitten. But with Mitten Proxy at least, it's open source and free. I made a video about Mitten Proxy just last week. It's a fairly niche tool, mostly used by pen testers and for QA. The exploit should be performed whenever user data.json is requested from the router. That would be every time one of the top tabs is clicked. As we'll eventually show, the options revealed by the exploit do persist their changes, at which point any security they offer is obfuscated. We have to modify the response. Notepad is very capable in Windows 11. We see the exploit works. We get more options in settings. TR069 is new here, although empty. The options for mobile now allow us to set a custom APN. That's the stated aim of this exploit, to network unlock the modem. The added options are just an extra bonus. The added options add functionality, which otherwise you would have to consider upgrading the firmware. Next, I'll show the extra options the exploit gives us. I use a Python script to automate the payload manipulation. Mitten proxy by default is on the path and includes a generic Python interpreter. No need for yet another virtual environment. I pass a couple of options. Allow hosts as a whitelist of all hosts whose flows we care about. Minus S accepts the script name. You can read all about how to script this intercept and others in the Mitten proxy docs. We must override specific method names in a class. The global variable add-ons has to contain an instance of this class. I comment out creation of that global variable to disable the script temporarily. Mitten proxy detects changes in the script and will reload it on the fly. All the options we see here are just the ones 3 allows us by default. I'm not covering every sub-menu. I know my way around the more important ones by now. I uncomment the crucial line, populating the global variable add-ons, save and restart Mitten Proxy for good measure. The pages I now show demonstrate what options the script adds. There's DMZ now. I don't expect to keep an IP address long with mobile. But the ones I provide here to the DMZ do stick. That's a massive foot gun having a DMZ that keeps computers in the DMZ without displaying this option. Opening ports in my firewall would be more useful, but I cannot get a rule to stick here. I'm not sure what they mean by subnet ID. I think it should mean the IP of the subnet, i.e. the zeroth address in the subnet's range, but it's only accepting up to four characters. I've tried a lot of things here, nothing works. And maybe I have to add some more options to the Mitum exploit. There are two routable subnets behind this firewall. There's guest Wi-Fi and everything else. I try setting the very IP of the device I'm now working from, but it still will not accept it. Possibly the subnet ID can be used to persuade it, or more likely I need to look at the exploit again. In all likelihood, I'll probably never want to open up a port here, even if I could. My Wi-Fi is off. Having it switchable via a physical switch is already more than I could have wished for. 
Under Settings, the Mobile section is where I can enter alternative APNs. I have to enter a dial number for it to be accepted. Zero works. Once entered, both APN and dial number persist, even after a break from using Mitten Proxy, even after reboot. They have stuck now. The bottom bar is black because I captured this footage out of sequence. My modem now has dial number populated until I factory reset it. A LAN status interests me. Here I can find all connected devices and MAC addresses, which I don't want to show you. This hasn't changed by using the exploit. Mobile status shows one to three bars out of five, always. Diagnostics is very useful. Ping lets us test internet connectivity from the modem, which is as direct a test of internet as would be possible by a consumer. Event log is new. I ignore this on my fiber landline connection and will here. That's just the public internet. Information. The information about open source software is fascinating. I'm not going to expose the versions here for bad actors to exploit. This information isn't so useful to me without shell access, which may or may not one day happen. To further test the exploit, I put my EE SIM in without changing the APN, without actually using the exploit, and it works. This seems to be dependent on the network provider. I run a speed test to make sure this isn't just a flash in the pan. Those are EE speeds. I've got limited data on this SIM, I think maybe one gig a month. Well, this shows the route has life beyond three. Should I desire a much more expensive tower from another operator? Set the proxy in Windows. This enables the advanced menu options. And I see it ran perfectly fine using the old three APN. I check my IP. I check his autonomous system I'm on. AS2856, that's BT's. Now BT uses EE equipment. Now it appears that that arrangement is reciprocal. Here is the Python I used with Mitten Proxy. I did create a project and virtual environment. After pip installing Mitten Proxy, I got a ton of IntelliSense help from PyCharm. I wrote two versions, two classes rather. The original, which iterates the JSON response. The quick or Q version just substitutes strings. Thanks as always for watching.